Hello everyone, Jimmy Boyd here for BetFirms.com, bringing you the 2012 Miami Marlins season predictions and MLB preview. One of the biggest stories this offseason is all the noise of the Mar Miami Marlins, formerly the Florida Marlins. The Marlins finished a disappointing 72-90 and last year, but a lot has changed since then. Ozzie Guillen has come over from the White Sox to become the new manager, and ownership is spending money like crazy. Despite missing out on Albert Pujols and C.J. Wilson, the Marlins were able to sign shortstop Jose Reyes, starting pitcher Mark Burley, and closer Heath Bell. Not to mention the team will pl be playing in a brand new ballpark called Sun Life Stadium. Here's a look at the Miami's projected starting lineup, starting rotation, and closer situation. Starting off at the infield, at catcher's John Buck. Buck's numbers took a big hit in his first season with the Marlins. After hitting 281 with 20 home runs and 66 RBIs with Toronto in 2010, he hit just 227 with 16 home runs and 57 RBI last year. He isn't expected to do a lot offensively, so any improvements would be a big plus for the offense. At first base would be Gabby Sanchez. Sanchez showed flashes of his potential by making the All-Star team last year, but his numbers after the All-Star break took a huge hit. He ended up hitting just 266 with 19 home runs and 78 RBI. It's hard telling which direction he'll go in 2012. One positive is that he's entering the prime of his career at age 28. At second is Omar Infante. Infante doesn't provide a lot offensively, but should form quite a tandem up the middle defensively with Jose Reyes. He hit just 275 with 7 home runs and 49 RBI, but at 30 years old, it's hard to imagine a huge rise in production. At shortstop is Jose Reyes. Reyes has the ability to carry an offense when he's healthy. He took home the NL batting title with a 337 average last year and hit an MLB best 16 triples. He scored 101 runs and swiped 39 bases. He did all of that in just 126 games. At third base will be Hanley Ramirez. He's moving over from the shortstop position, and he isn't all that excited about it, but there's no question Reyes is a better fit at short. Ramirez was a big disappointment in 2011. He hit just 243 with 10 home runs and 43 RBI in just 92 games. Injuries to his back and shoulder slowed Ramirez down. If he can get healthy, he has the potential to be one of the best offensive players in the game. In the outfield, over in left is Logan Morrison. Morrison provided some nice power power numbers with 23 home runs and 72 RBI in his first full season of the majors. However, his batting average fell from 283 in 2010 to just 247 last year. The kid is just 24 years old, and if he can improve his discipline at the plate, he could be a huge surprise this season. In center will be Emilio Bonificio. Bonificio is the definition of a utility player. The guy played every position but catcher in first base. It appears the Marlins are going to give him a shot at the center field job, but he is a valuable backup to Reyes and Ramirez at short and third. He hit 296 with 40 steals in 152 games last year. Out and right is Mike Stanton. Stanton lived up to expectations he set as a rookie. After hitting 259 with 22 home runs and 59 RBI in 2010, Stanton raised his numbers to 262 with 34 home runs and 87 RBI. The kid doesn't turn 23 years old until November. Now we move on to the starting rotation. The anchor of this staff will be Josh Johnson. He's only, he was only able to make nine starts last year, which is a big reason why the Marlins didn't live up to their expectations. The 28-year-old has the stuff to win the Cy Young, but must prove he can stay healthy. In his nine starts last year, he went 3-1 and one with a ridiculous 1.64 ERA and .98 whip. Then there's Mark Burley. Burley has put together 11 straight double-digit win seasons in which he has pitched at least 200 innings. He went just 13-9 with the White Sox last year, but his 3.59 ERA was his lowest since posting a 3.12 ERA in 2005. Third spot should be manned down by Ricky Nolasco. Miami is hoping Nolasco can regain some of his form of 2008 when he went 15-8 with a 3.52 ERA. That might be a bit of a stretch. His 4.57 ERA and 1.40 whip from last year are not good indicators that he is moving in the right direction. If he can just get his ERA around 4.0, he has the potential to win 15-plus games. And the four-hole should be Carlos Zambrano. The Marlins decided to take a chance on Zambrano, who couldn't make things work with the Cubs. The former three-time All-Star still has what it takes to be an elite pitcher, but his inability to control his emotions has kept him from reaching his potential. Prior to last year, Zambrano's highest ERA mark in a full season was 3.95, which has me thinking he can improve on his 4.82 ERA. Then closing out the rotation will be Anibal Sanchez. Sanchez pitched better last year than his record indicates. He went just 8-9, but he had a very respectable 3.67 ERA and a 1.28 whip. 
He also threw three complete games and two shutouts. Now we'll move on to the closer role. Heath Bell is expected to be the closer for the Marlins this year. There have been just 16 closers who have been able to record 40 saves in a single season over the last three years. Bell has accomplished the feat in each of the last three. With an offense that figures to be able to score a lot of runs, Bell figures to have plenty of chances to shut the door on the opposition with his new team.